our our topic is truly relig uh, true religion okay so what is i mean as far as god is concerned do you think that um what do you think comprise being a genuine or true religion can somebody share your opinion <clears throat> what do you think or is a true and genuine religion hagios diane also anyone can unmute if you want to share something what do you think is being true or authentic religion Hagios, you can unmute. I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Um, do you think religion is good or something that we uh, have to uphold? Anyway, um, religion can only be good if people really do walk their talk or what is believed is seldom lived that is sadly the reality so genuine or truly religion should be consistent no now we live what we preach so in short let us not be hypocrite okay sometimes Shansi is guilty of that no i my son told me bluntly Oh, mama, you're a hypocrite. In Kuwait, son. You always say, oh, let us sleep early. But then you sleep late. <laughs> so may we ask God to help us. No, If we say something, uh, it's good for you to sleep early, let's do that. Or if you want to inform others that, oh, let's, uh, let's, pray all the time or let's uh, have healthy eat healthy food or let's uh, read the bible make sure you are also consistent doing what you ask our children or others to follow okay there should not be dichotomy between the two it's important that we will uh, be consistent because people will be confused why mama said it's important to sleep early and why she's not sleeping early may god forgive me on that and may god help us all with god's help to learn something from god's word today okay that let us not be quick to be angry but slow to speak and slow to become angry so i think our passage will be it's not, I think, James 1, 19 to 27. Can I request, um, has said, can you please read, my dear? Okay, Daphne, can you please read? My dear brothers and sisters, no, me. take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, huh? slow Later. to speak, and slow to become angry. 20, 20 because human's anger does not produce the righteousness, righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the world planted in you which can save you. Okay, thank you. Next, has said, do you want to read next? Continue, verse 22. Do not, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what he says, verse 23. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what he says is like someone who looks that at this face in a mirror verse 24 and after looking at himself thus away oh. and, and and immediately he forgets what he looks like verse 25 but whoever looks 
Intently. What? Intently. Intently into the perfect law that gives with freedom and continues in it. Not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in blessed. what they do. Okay, thank you. Continue, Marvin. Verse 26. Those who consider... Those who, those who consider themselves like religious and get do not keep and type rain on their tongues is deceived themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look at the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Okay, so let's digest these verses together. Okay, so we can learn from the passage that we live in a world filled with filth and stain. Do you think so? So many bashers, so many people, scamming people, dishonest, trying to get advantage, pulling each other down. Constant is given. Uh, so we are in that kind of world. No, Sometimes there's just too many concerns also that makes us worried and prone <laughs> to commit sin because of the place or the world we live in. So with that, it's constant given as far as the Bible and experiences and observation are concerned. The prevalence of sin makes the Christian life truly a challenge. So, but in spite of this dark and gloomy scenario what should we do we are called to live everybody say righteously that is according to god's standard demand and command so we are called to be righteous holy because god's standard is higher no maybe the, the moral law of the land is that thou shall not murder but god's standard is higher if you hate somebody and you consider that person as dead you are already committing murder so god's standard is higher god wants us to obey his command to live righteously so if your thoughts your heart leads you to think negatively or to urge you to do revenge or fight but may god help us no to live righteously so with god's help again remember i can do all things through christ who strengthens me so with god's help we can overcome okay everybody can you give me a thumbs up for that or write in the chat box amen if you agree as people of faith, the redeemed ones, the way we live our life can make us break people's understanding about our faith when they see inconsistency. No, True religion is not only centered in the right belief. It's important to have right belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, but it should be coupled with righteous acts that proves it. Diba? Uh, the Bible tells us, for example, uh, we believe that the Bible, we believe in Christ as our Lord and Savior. It's important, but it should be coupled with righteous act. Meaning, if you believe that Jesus is God and that His com we should obey his commands, it's not only here. It should be shown in our action. So when you are told to love one another, it should be consistent that talaga you love others. It's so sad, no? If Christian is the one who caused gossip, betrayal, being dishonest, 
and hurting other people. That's confusing to the people who observe. Why? She's Christian. Why she's acting like that? So may we not be that kind of person. The believers who were living in Israel that time also is facing same challenges. But this one, um, their homeland, revolutionaries, mga zealots, mga, um, they are being ruled by Romans and they claim more for independence. And because of that, um, they want to, I mean, they face persecution, economic difficulties, like what we have now, no? High inflation rate, many are unemployed. I think around 9 million no? are jobless, can easily trust the believer in a corner and is tempted to retaliate. So when the citizen of the land is hard pressed, there are sometimes clamor for change, for rebellion. So let's not be like that because the word of God said, uh, let's not be quick to get angry. If you know, example, in the government, you are not satisfied with this leader. Instead of revolting, what we are told to do, to pray for our leaders, to submit to authorities. If you know, like in the home, even though your maybe parents is not treating fairly, he has favoritism or he's kind of um, so authoritarian or strict to the point that it causes you to feel so agitated and you want to rebel or talk back. You pray for your parents and submit to authorities. So let's pray because we believe that um, as Christian, we should not be someone who is quick to become angry. You can talk to your parents after he's not angry anymore or just learn to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and then nothing no problem, I believe, will not be solved. Maybe 99% of problem can be solved when you talk and with, with couple it with prayers. You can find solution to the problem. Okay, next. So in this climate, this James chapter 1, the book of James that's the context, no? People are being ruled by Romans and they want freedom. So James remind the believers in church or Christians about how they should live their lives. So calling them dear beloved brothers, James placed his fellow believers in a realm of family. So these commands are brought forward by James to remind us to take note. So let's read again some of all the verses that you just read earlier. Na <clears throat> he's speaking to the believers. My dear brothers. Lauren, can you read? Or Diane? Take note of this. Yes, Diane. Unmute. My dear brothers, take note of this. Every, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For mass anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the, and the evil that is so pre prevalent and humbly accept the the word planted in me, which can save you. So very clear, no? God wants us to not be quick to talk back, to reason. Slow to speak. Slow to become angry. No matter what kind of leader we have, we can be wiser, no? Because if we get angry, it will lead to 
unrighteous life. Man's anger does not bring about righteous life that God's desire. Have you tried, have you experienced being angry? Can you, can you raise your hand? Marvin, you haven't felt being angry? In what situation? Yes, Marvin, you haven't felt being angry? Or can you, no, can you share an experience that you got angry? What happened? It, did it bring something good or bad? Chebar, you want to share some experience? You know, when we get angry, um, seldom it brings something good. So if there's, but it's not an emotion that we can just ignore, no? If you felt angry, try your best to express it. Wow, it's not easy, but may God help us, no? If you're really so flared up, you try lang to inhale, exhale. Or you can also inhale through your mouth, exhale through your nose. And try your best to, also if you have squeeze ball, yeah, but sadly, no, Sometimes human as we are, we tend to be reactive instead of um, being what? Curious. We tend to be furious. So let's try our best to be curious. Why my, my papa, why my mama is angry at me? Or why our government, or why my friend my classmates are acting like this maybe because they are going through something or there are issues that makes them feel like that of course no um there's always a reason why someone is angry there's no such thing as she just got angry without reason but let's be curious why let's pray anything i can do for you what happened? No, may God help Shansi Kati also to be not quick to be angry, but slow to speak, slow to become angry. Okay, may God help us all. Can you type in the chat box? Let's be curious instead of furious. When I, when my children or when somebody did something wrong to me that makes me feel so angry may god help us to analyze first why he did this to me okay so let's move on i hope you learned something kids submission to god's word is a healthy sign that one is truly spiritual so if you're te if you're tempted to get angry, let us read god's word Submit to God's word that reminds us to be slow to become angry. There are many verses pala, no, that we can learn so that uh, we, that reminds us not to be easily angry. I think Hesed has a recording on that. Many times we either get angry on people because they remind us or rebuke us of our misdeeds using God's word or we easily become angry because we have not allowed the word of God to take hold of us. So if somebody corrects us, just like when my son told me, Mama, you're a hypocrite, no? So of course, I can get angry. Why you say that? Like, nah, 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 nah. I have many reasons. But of course, I ask, why, son? Why you said that? Kasi mama, like this, you say that we have to sleep early, but you don't. So instead of being furious of someone correcting you of your own action, let us try to be curious why. Why they said that to, me, to us? Maybe we really have something wrong. Okay, let's be a learner who humbly accept if somebody correct us or somebody... Um, yeah, correct us or 
maybe we have not obeyed the word of God. So if they remind us, let's not be angry. We should be thankful because that person correct us or say mirrors us. No? In James times, it was so easy to be angry with the government and join protests to attack against the authority. So this shouldn't be. As Christians, we should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Can you please read Daphne? Many, th many times we speak angry words about our government as well. In the midst of our desire to see change in government, this is a timely reminder for us as Christians. We should not be quick to criticize with anger. We need to be quick to listen and and so to speak much more to become so to anger. Yes, thank you. Tomorrow is Sona. State of the Nation address by our president, Bongbong Marcos, no? So some people who doesn't like him to be our president might protest or do some rally. Honestly, as possible, let's not join this kind of cause because God doesn't like that. He wants us to submit to authority whether we vote for him or not or whether we like him or not. But since he has, he has been appointed to be our president during this six-year term in this season, let's support, let's pray, let's uh, do what his, uh, support his plans for our country. Okay? I hope it's very clear. If your parents have some changes in the family, maybe your father or mom agreeing together that you may leave or you may study here or like that let's try to submit and really uh, be able to obey no kasi um they have been instituted by god to be the head in the home so let's submit so there's no chaos imagine a family a country whose citizen or whose children doesn't obey their parents what will happen is the family strong? Of course, weak. And it, it's not healthy environment. Mm, it's not safe, right? So, yeah. May God help us. But if, again, if the government or the head in the home is not obeying the, letting you do something that is not according to God's word, telling you to steal, to murder, or to lie, you can say, I'm sorry, Papa, I'm sorry, Mama, uh, or you tell the authority. Like, for example, you are caught, no? You are told by the MMDA, for example, or what? Or just give us something so that I let you go. Of course, it's bribery, right? Or something like that in the government. Of course, we will not submit to like that kind of setup that they want you to bribe them so that they, you can get away with something. It's not how it should be, okay? We can disobey or we cannot, we can learn not to submit to authority if they, what they ask us to do is dishonest, is not according to the word of God, correct? Can you please type amen again and uh, approve if you get it? So what happened when a brother or sister comes up to you and lovingly reminds you of your Christian walk or life? Do you get angry over him or her? I hope not. No, you should tell, tell that person, thank you so much for telling me that I am wrong or I should not do this. It means that is your true friend. It means your parents cares for you if they just don't allow you to just do what you want because this is how you feel, this is what you like, then they just let you be and do nothing. No, if your parents truly cares for you or your friend, they will tell you, you know, has said, stop peek or stop just sleep, sleep, or do nothing, or you have to learn to contribute or something like that. Let's not be lazy. 
Okay, so if your parents will discipline you or telling you what is right, what the, the Bible say, yes, you have to. No, I'm busy later. What's that mean, Daphne? So you have to just thank God that your parents or your brother or sister, your friend, corrects you. Okay, I hope it's clear. According to William Penn, it is he who is in the wrong who first gets angry. There, it could be something true, no? When someone easily gets angry, maybe because that person did something wrong. Because if a person is wise and he knows he didn't do it, he will not get angry. He will just say, no, I did not do that, no? Sometimes people get angry to cover up something or because like that. We need to understand that God can use someone to remind us of our fault. That's why we are brothers, dear brothers and sister to one another. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. So if somebody reminds you again, don't get angry. Okay. Are you... Are our life characterized by angry outbursts? If you no. know someone who has that kind of attitude or behavior, let's pray for that person. Maybe he has anger management disorder or he is trauma because of maybe he has some past experience that makes him an angry person or like that. Sometimes the person is like this. Example, I have a friend who don't like to be even tap on the back. He feels like, no, no. But he, she's, she's not used, she doesn't like that. So maybe because he has past experience or he might, that he was sexually harassed like that or abused or maybe because he has some expectation that he did not meet, kaya he has a lot of frustration, he easily gets angry at so many things, he like that. So let's be, again, curious, no? Why this person easily bursts in anger all the time? Let's not be tempted to be like him or be like her. Because he easily gets angry, you also get angry back. Let's try to <laughs> level up. Let's not lower our attitude to be like his or like that person who easily bursts in anger. But show it to that person. Inhale. <sighs> then try to ignore and just tell that person when he's not angry. You know what you did earlier? It's not healthy and it's not good for me also. Why you are angry? You can ask. Be curious. Because you did not obey. You did not do this. Uh, I'm sorry, Papa. Or I'm sorry, Mama. Like that. And then I'll try to... Voice mom. It got no, no more it, voice. It went, oh, it's like it became super quiet. Speak Can you hear it. me now? Yes, okay, it's good. Thank you. Okay, this should not be okay. For man's anger does not bring out the righteous life that God desires. Very important, huh? So as much as possible, try your best to control or shall we say manage your anger we when we're angry most often than not it leads to sin and all sorts of problems that you will regret later on why gani i shouted why i i threw this i threw that so according to benjamin franklin can you please read uh, marvin Anger is never without a reason, but seldom with a good one. Yes. Continue. 
whatever is begun in anger ends in shame. Yes. You know that anger doesn't help anything. It leads to shame. Usually it ended something that is not good. Even you still have reason why you get angry, but tell them it will lead to a good one. So therefore, when you say imperative, it means it's a must that we rid ourselves of all moral filth and evil. Please read Hagios. Hebrews 12.1. Hebrews 12.1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So if you want to be successful or you have a goal, you take away anything that leads you to not reach that goal, especially this mga anger issues or things that makes you regret later on. So get away. All these are distractions that will not help in your uh, goal. <laughs> okay? So if somebody like uh, makes, causing you to be angry, telling you words that hurts your feelings, don't mind. You know, if you mind everybody, because if you are growing and you are productive, people throw stones at you. I don't know why human wants to pull others down. Just don't be distracted. Don't get angry with these petty things who, that is done by people whom you don't know, who doesn't care about you. Just focus on your goal. I want to be successful. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a successful lawyer. I want to be the best I can be so God will be glorified in my life. And people say... Ah, you're hypocrite. You are not uh, really love God. You're just doing that to show off or whatever. So many other negative comments. I like, no? Sometimes Shansi Kati likes to watch interview of actress. Uh, what next? Basta, there's an actress also said, don't mind them. <laughs> just focus kasi as if you become an actor or actress, many bashers yan sila. So, if you allow to be hurt, every comment of people whom you don't know, you will be exhausted emotionally and you are not able to give your best in your work. You will not be able to give your best in your studies because I, I got hurt. My, my best friend did this to me or like that. And then you get angry. You want to plan for revenge or what. And it distracts you from what you should be doing, preparing for exam, preparing for, uh, because maybe even don't underestimate what God can, can do through you. Huh? You can be an author, you can create a blog, you can do so many things, productive things. So don't be distracted. Do not surround, because don't throw off everything that hinders and the sin that easily entangles, like, anger like jealousy or feelings that are no need just persevere run the race mark out before us the world we live in has so much okay so here we should humbly accept the word of god that is planted in us when we first believe in jesus it is the same word that will save us from destructive ways of the world so what's the antidote for to anger can you unmute? What's the antidote to anger is? Can biblical you type? submission. God's word. Yes, and biblical that. submission. You have to read God's word and apply what God's word says. You submit what the word of God says. What's God's command, what God demands, you have to submit, obey. That's the antidote to anger problem. So if you know someone who's easily angry, tell that person, remind that person, please read God's word. And apply. <laughs> Not only that we need to get rid of ourselves of all evil that leads to anger, but we should be doers and not just hearers. So not just we read, huh? not only read and submit, but really apply. 
Real submission is obedience to God's word. You don't obey and then... No. Obey with... Um, happily no? submit. Parang obey ka with joy. Not with uh, so many complaints. A man looking at the mirror would simply want to see how he looks and what problem his face might have. And if you see a speck or some dirt, you wipe it right away, right? This is basically the point. When you see a problem in your life, you don't do anything about it. You listen and not do. What's the point? You deceive yourself. How are you? Do you know your problem? What do you think is your weakness? Maybe Shansikati is very clear, no? I'm very workaholic and sometimes I neglect my health. So I need to change. <laughs> so I have to be disciplined. I have to take care of my health because I love my family. You know what's your concern. If it's about you reflect, no? You look at the mirror, it's like reflecting. Lord, I'm convicted. This is my weakness. I tend to like somebody that maybe is not a Christian or, or you know, when I'm something, you know if it's not right before God. So may God help us to, may God help us. Why are you typing? I said, just focus, huh? Okay. So remember to just uh, ask God to help you. I got distracted. Sorry for that. Okay. So we can find here an allusion also to man as God, as made in God's image and likeness. So in reference that we are God's creation, we are created to be like him. We don't forget that our very nature necessi necessitate that we be doers because we are Christian. So sad, no? If you say, you tell people or you said, I'm a Christian. Christian backbiter, Christian haters, Christian scammer. No, it should be consistent, no? Because we are made in the image of God. So we should also be like Christ. Okay. So may I ask Hesed to please read? Focus Hesed. Don't um skip writing in the chat box, but contrast this with another person who looks intently into the perfect law. In the perfect law. That gives freedom. Does give freedom. And continue to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it. Can you read the yellow one? He will be. He will be blessed in what he does. Blessed. Yes, he does. Okay. If you really continue to do what, obey what you read from the word of God, you really do it, not forget it. You will be blessed in what you do. Let me see a hand. Who wants to be successful? God's promise. No, God, God is a promise keeper. If he said that, that if you obey my commands, he will bless you. So he will surely bless us if we obey his commands. Blessing awaits those who obey God's word. Has said, continue. God's word. Wait, God's blesses who obey yes. those who obey God's word. God's word is not burdensome. Burdensome. In, In fact, fact, it brings freedom. Yes. You know, when we obey God, we have freedom. You know what are these verses? Can you please read Hagios? There's so much freedom when we obey. Uh -oh. Okay, 
Agnes did not hear. This okay. is love for God to obey His commands, and His commands are not burdensome. Sorry. Uh, can I go to the restroom? I need to pee. Daphne? John 8.32. John 8.32. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Next, yep. the truth of the matter is Chebar. The truth of the matter is this. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight brain on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Mm. So this is the last two verses that we need to deal. So if you consider yourself as religious and does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceive himself and the religion, his religion is worthless. Okay, if your religion does not change you, then you should change your religion. <laughs> True religion is hearing and obeying God's word. Our topic is true religion. So what is true religion? Can somebody unmute? What is true religion again? Just go back. Is hearing, hearing, hearing God's, word. God's word. So let's not involve ourselves in matters that are trivial, does not lead to righteousness. But rather, let us do, take care, help the poor, help the widows, the orphans, no? Instead of dwelling, stirring up anger, uh, arguing, complaining against the government or against your parents or whatever, or towards your friend who betray you or like that, spend instead much energy do not spend your energy on unproductive things there are many widows and orphans are languishing in pain and loneliness so let us show them what true religiosity and true spirituality is all about instead of involving ourselves in too much talk about social causes let us put our mouth to good use let us Keep ourselves from being polluted by the evil society. Let us put good sense back to what is truly a religious person. Are we then practicing true religion? God, our Father, accepts? That's a question that we need to reflect. Does people see Christ in us? Do they want to follow what we believe? Very important. Our faith and action should be consistent. Okay? So, James, the author of the book, is very clear that we okay. have to... You go to the bathroom. Okay. Okay. Hagios, can you please what Martin Luther said? Religion. Religion is not doctrinal knowledge, but wisdom born of personal experience. What does that mean? It's like, it's not just reading or knowing about doctrines. It's about like actually doing stuff. Amen. Very good, has said. So true religion... I'm happy uh, not happy. Said, I'm True okay. religion <laughs> is hearing and obeying God's word. So it's a personal experience, not just putting stuff on your head. No? It should be something that is really experiential. True religion is like that. Okay? Please watch this, huh? Uh, no. What to say bye na? Not yet. This is our closing. If you were a praying mantis, it would be socially acceptable to devour your mate. And if you're a honey badger, you have no regard for other animals. You don't care. If you're a panda with twins, it's normal to abandon one to take care of the other. 
But if humans do any of these things, we would call it wrong, unfair, or unjust. Yeah, why is that? Why do humans care so much about justice? Well, the Bible has a fascinating response to that question. On page one, humans are set apart from all other creatures as the image of God. Yeah, God's representatives who rule the world by his definition of good and evil. And this identity, it's the bedrock of the Bible's view of justice. All humans are equal before God and have the right to be treated with dignity and fairness no matter who you are. And that would be nice if we all did that, but we know how the world really works. And the Bible addresses that too. It shows how we are constantly redefining good and evil to our own advantage at the expense of others. Yeah, self-preservation. And the weaker someone is, the easier it is to take advantage of them. And so in the biblical story, we see this happening on a personal level, but also in families and then in communities and in whole civilizations that create injustice, especially towards the vulnerable. But the story doesn't end there. Out of this whole mess, God chose a man named Abraham to start a new kind of family. Specifically, Abraham was to teach his family to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. Yeah, doing righteousness, that's a Bible word I don't really use, but what comes to mind is being a good person. But what does that even mean, being good? The biblical Hebrew word for righteousness is tzedakah, and it's more specific. It's an ethical standard that refers to right relationships between people. It's about treating others as the image of God. With the God-given dignity they deserve. And this word justice, it's the Hebrew word mishpat. It can refer to retributive justice. Like if I steal something, I pay the consequences. Exactly. Yet most often in the Bible, mishpat refers to restorative justice. It means going a step further, actually seeking out vulnerable people who are being taken advantage of and helping them. Yeah, some people call this charity. But mishpat involves way more. It means taking steps to advocate for the vulnerable and changing social structures to prevent injustice. So justice and righteousness are about a radical, selfless way of life. Yeah, and you find this idea all over the Bible. Like here, in the book of Proverbs, what does it mean to bring about just righteousness? Open your mouth for those who can't speak for themselves. And what do these words mean for the prophets, like Jeremiah? Rescue the disadvantaged and don't tolerate oppression or violence against the immigrant, the orphan, and the widow. And like here, look in the book of Psalms. The Lord God upholds justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, and sets the prisoner free but he thwarts the way of the wicked. Whoa, he thwarts the wicked? Yeah, in Hebrew, the word wicked is rasha. It means guilty or in the wrong. It refers to someone who mistreats another human, ignoring their dignity as an image of God. So justice and righteousness is a big deal to God. Yes, it's what Abraham's family, the Israelites, were to be all about. They ended up as immigrant slaves, being oppressed unjustly in Egypt. And so God confronted Egypt's evil, declaring them to be rasha, guilty of injustice. And so he rescued Israel. But the tragic irony of the Old Testament story is that these redeemed people went on to commit the same acts of injustice against the vulnerable. And so God sent prophets who declared Israel guilty. But they weren't the only ones. There's injustice everywhere. Yeah, some people actively perpetrate injustice. Others receive benefits or privileges from unjust social structures they take for granted. And sadly, history has shown that when the oppressed gain power, they often become oppressors themselves. So we all participate in injustice, actively or passively, even unintentionally. We're all the guilty ones. And so this is the surprising message of the biblical story. God's response to humanity's legacy of injustice is to give us a gift, the life of Jesus. He did righteousness and justice, and yet he died on behalf of the guilty. But then God declared Jesus to be the righteous one when he rose from the dead. And so now Jesus offers his life to the guilty so that they too can be declared righteous before God, not because of anything they've done, but because of what Jesus did for them. The earliest followers of Jesus experienced this righteousness from God, not just as a new status, but as a power that changed their lives and compelled them to act in surprising new ways. Yeah, if God declared someone righteous when they didn't deserve it, the only reasonable response is to go and seek righteousness and justice for others. This is a radical way of life. 
and it's not always convenient or easy. It's courageously making other people's problems my problems. This is what Jesus meant by loving your neighbor as yourself. It's about a lifetime commitment fueled by the words of the ancient prophet Micah. God has told you, humans, what is good and what the Lord requires of you is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Okay, so I hope you learned something today. Let us live justly, righteously with God. Let's come to the Lord in prayer, my dear kids, young people. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord, for your beautiful reminders that we should not just be hearers, but doers of your word. That is the true meaning of religion. That we should be consistent with what we preach and how we live our life. Help us, Lord, and forgive us if many times we have caused someone to stumble because of our unrefrained tongue. Help us to be slow to speak, slow to become angry, quick to listen. Lord, help us, Lord, to not waste our time arguing, but rather focus on how we could help the widows, the poor, the orphans. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord. We need your help that we will throw away anything that hinders, that doesn't please you. Feelings, emotion, negative emotions, or anger problems. In Jesus' name, help us change our ways and focus, persevere to finish the race that you marked for us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. See you next week.